Well, I guess I should explain to you guys where exactly I've been for these past couple months. Um, I'm alive, I'm not dead, okay? I, for those of you that aren't following me on the main YouTube channel, then you probably thought I was dead or something. No, 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 no. I've been doing a lot of things actually, and um, I just didn't have time to film it. One reason, because summer is ridiculous in Japan, but also because I just didn't have that time. But today, it's time to start removing everything that physically belongs to me in the car. So like all the stuff hanging from the mirror, the mirror itself, uh, all the decoration stuff that I have. Nothing's modified on this thing. As you guys know, we've had this car for, well, on this channel, we've had it for what, a year or so? But in reality, I've actually had this car for four years. And um, one thing I didn't tell you guys, I told you guys I was gonna do this, but I never showed it to you guys. But I did put brand new tires on this thing. Um, so now it's on it's on Dunlop tires now because the old tires were so done like I was like scared to drive um, With those previous tires. This was about two months ago or so. So we've been running a little bit on them all the um, What is it called tire wax or whatever? It's pretty much worn off already. So it's been a little bit um, But yeah brand new tires on it um, It's been a couple months, but um, Yeah, today's the day I gotta remove everything that physically belongs to me. So four years ago, I bought this because it's a K car. So as you guys may or may not know, K car is really fuel efficient, smaller engine, only 660 cc's, 63 horsepower roughly. Um, so it's really reliable. And for the past four years, it's really helped me tremendously. Um, but you guys know that pretty much my whole life of living in Japan, which has been almost five years now, I've been trying to work towards getting something I've always wanted in my life. And today might actually be the day where that could potentially happen. So this might possibly be the last time you guys see the K-Wagon on this channel ever. But four years of owning this, it's done so much for me. It's taken me all the way to Guma Prefecture, which is about a 78 hour drive from here. We drove up Mount Haruna, AKA Mount Akina, for those of you that guys know Initial D. I've driven all the way to Tokyo Auto Salon, which is in Chiba, because they moved uh, that car show to Chiba in recent years. Um, I've driven all the way to Nagano Prefecture, which is way up in the mountains in Japan. We've, we've done so much with this thing and it's never, nothing's gone catastrophically wrong with this aside from really minor things like engine overheating <laughs> yeah you don't want to drive a k car um long distance or in guma area because that's nothing but uphill so <laughs> but aside from that i've had one recall on this car when closer to when i first bought it there was a recall for this model um, i forget what it was though but it was something really minor but i did have to take it to a suzuki dealership but aside from that, just regular maintenance, you know, oil change, all that kind of stuff. Um, one of the, I don't know what it's called, attached to the controller on the shift boot, what is it called? I'm sorry if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what it's called, one of those rubber covers or whatever. Um, it actually torn, but that was completely my fault. The reason being is because like I mentioned, um, or as you guys know, the tires were not replaced for a very long time. They were so worn out. So I think um, all the vibration and whatever else probably caused it to, crack and whatever so that had to be replaced um and as you guys know the air conditioner again it doesn't work i did do a uh, a free on gas um what do you call it recharge not recharge what it refill i guess um but that was i don't know about a month ago or so and the air conditioner starting to go out again um but aside from that that's pretty much it this thing has literally been a warrior for me and uh these past four years have been nothing but amazing with this car. One last look for you guys. I know I said I wanted this channel to be like a K car channel, something different for you guys. Um, but recently, and I think I mentioned this in previous videos or something, a lot has changed in my life and I'm starting to be able to go towards more of the original things that I wanted to do um, right after I moved to Japan, which was about five years ago. So. Uh, the original plan is kind of going back on track and that's plan B, which is this, um, might actually uh, be taken off. So that might be it. It's been fun. It's been absolutely fun. But now I just got to clean up the car a little bit, um, remove all the stuff that belongs to me, make sure I don't miss anything. 
and uh, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. So what's next? What's next for this chapter? Let's find out, shall we? All right, so it's been roughly about a month since the portion that you just saw. Uh, yeah, a lot has happened, as you can tell. Uh, I'm outside again, I'm wearing a hoodie, which means it's not hot anymore. So summer's officially over. Um, we're at this park that I've definitely brought you guys to before, but uh, I don't think I really showed you guys around. But uh, there's a reason why we're here today, because uh, there's one location at this park in the parking lot actually where I like to come if you've seen the, the YouTube banner the banner of this channel then uh, you'll know the location because it's literally just down there which I'll show you guys in a second but why we're here and why this portion of the video is a month later it's quite a story behind that so let's go towards the parking lot back in that direction forwards if you've seen my Instagram page or just look at the YouTube banner. You'll definitely recognize that area over there. That's where I take, or where I took some of the photos um, that I posted. And uh, yeah, it happened just over there. Now the reason to why we're here, you might ask, I usually, actually I guess I always only come here when I have a photo that I want to take. Also, what the heck, there's a Mustang here in Japan. That's weird. You rarely see a Mustang here. But anyways, so yeah, for those of you that have seen the Instagram posts and uh, the YouTube banner, then you'll recognize this spot right here. At this angle, you'll definitely recognize this right here. So why we're here, you might ask? Well, like I said, I got something I want to show you guys. So without further ado, Let's just get to it. We've waited long enough. It's been a whole month since I wanted to film this video or to actually upload this video or whatever. So I think it's about time. I showed you guys something that's in this parking lot. So let's go. So this is it. This is my new, or new to me, I should say, 2015 Toyota 86 FRS, BRZ, whatever you want to call it. It's officially a Toyota 86 though. And yes, I can call it a 86. I don't have to call it an 86. The reason is because, of course, I live in Japan. It's right-hand drive. Bought it here in Japan. Legit. JDM Hachiroku, officially, it is mine. It took so many years, we finally got it. And I gotta explain to you guys what's been happening this past month since uh, we last recorded or whatever it's been. So let's get to it. I'll show you guys around and explain to you guys everything that happened this past month. Well, what has been happening this past month? I told you guys that the K-Wagon was gonna be sold off in the last video, I told you guys that I was planning on getting something that I've always wanted to get for a long time. And uh, yeah, so the K-Wagon is officially gone. No longer own that thing. I sold it off from the day of recording this video. It's been two weeks. It's been exactly two weeks since uh, I got the keys to this in my hands. So the K-Wagon has been gone. I've already done a couple of minor things to this thing, which I'll show you guys in a second. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's in pearl white. Hachiroku. I told you guys I was going to buy one of these. It, it wasn't a secret. I guess you guys knew. Um, but I guess I should explain why I specifically got a white in 2015 and uh, how I ended up with this thing. So let's go through it and I'll show you guys everything this thing has to offer. So why a Hachiroku? Well, you guys know that uh, for a long time I've been wanting, well I guess everybody does nowadays, is everybody wants like a 90s JDM sports car like an RX-7 or a Mark IV Supra or a 180 SX, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? 
but recently the market as all of you know has been skyrocketing with those cars and uh, another reason is for those of you that don't know i'm not embarrassed to tell you guys this because i've already told you guys so many times and i don't really care um i suck at driving a manual car so this hachiroko was one sports car i was easily willing to buy an automatic and yes yes it is an automatic okay go ahead and laugh but i honestly think the hachiroku is just as good in an automatic as it is in a manual just because of the way the transmission is laid out and designed and everything so go ahead and laugh all you want it is an automatic but i am super happy with this so as to why i got a white hachiroku so the original story that i told you guys was that I wanted to try and find a sunrise yellow, I believe it was, or the Pikachu yellow, whatever you want to call it. I think it's officially called the sunrise yellow, uh, Hachiroku, uh, which is a 2015. And uh, it had the the Nerf spec, I believe it was. Um, some of the other Australian trim pieces, I don't know what it's called, the package. Um, I told you guys I was really going to try and get one of those. But uh, <laughs> as the name states, it is limited, so... Uh, and because it's limited and a rare color and everything, it would have been impossible for me to get alone get one, but to also pay the money that it would have been, probably would have been double the amount of what I paid for this, which I will tell you guys in the future, sometime in the future, I'll tell you guys how much I actually paid for this. But for now, uh, we'll keep it simple. Yeah, so after I gave up on that idea, which I totally lied to you guys about getting the sunrise yellow, there's no way that was going to happen. So... Uh, I told you guys I was going to opt for something a lot easier to find, uh, which was a black in either 2013 or 2014. So, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the 2012s had major recalls with the engine, right? Something about like the oil and the coolant leaking into each other, something like that. I don't know exactly. Um, and then I think that carried over to some of the 2013s. And then the 14s and 15s, I don't believe had major recalls. But I could be wrong, so someone please correct me if I'm wrong about that. Or please tell me what the actual uh, truth is. Um, but yeah, this is a 2015 in white. And the reason why I got white is because I originally wanted a black one. But then, believe it or not, my mom, okay, who knows nothing about sports cars, okay? She convinced me to actually buy a white one for a long time okay so this was about a year ago while i was thoroughly looking for a hachiroku um this car is pretty difficult to find actually um in this anywhere between 2012 to 15 is kind of difficult to find especially in my area just because my area is kind of a small city there's not many dealerships and stuff like that so i was looking for a black one my mom kept telling me no you should buy a white one you should buy a white one it looks so much better it looks uh more like an expensive like you paid more for the car it looks more expensive it looks more valuable um, and on top of that, the one thing my mom did tell me is that she said it'll be so much easier for you to wash your car and clean it if it's white rather than black, which is so true now that I have this. So for that long amount of time, my mom kept convincing me and uh, <laughs> it happened. So I officially have a white 2015 Toyota Hachiroku. Um, you have no idea how lucky I am with this car and I'll show you guys why. So... Like I mentioned, the 2012s and 13s, I believe, had major recalls. Uh, 2014s and 15s were produced in way less numbers, I believe. Um, so I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to find a 2015. So I tried looking for 2014s. They were a little more common than the 15s, but uh, still pretty difficult to find one. So I was thinking, okay, maybe I'll get a 2013. It'll be cheaper as well, but maybe down the road, I might have recall issues or something like that. So I was looking and looking and looking. And then in my prefecture, so I live in Shizuoka prefecture, um, a car showed up. It was a 2015 in white. And this was it. It was about an hour drive away from where I'm living. And it appeared on Gunet. So some of you guys might know that website. It's kind of like Auto Trader in North America, but it's called Gunet here. Gunet's like the number one car selling market, online market, I guess you call it. So it appeared on the website. I kept looking at it. Um, I honestly fell in love with it immediately, but I didn't bite on it for one month. I'm not sure what the reason was. I think it was because I was too hesitant to actually buy a car because obviously this is a sports car. You're paying a lot of money for it and stuff. So 
every day I was looking and looking and looking comparing to other things. This car remained on that website um, for a whole month. And uh, it was exactly what I wanted. It was in white, uh, automatic. It has only 40,000 kilometers on the odometer. And out of what I could tell in the photos, this car looks super clean. But usually in photos or videos or whatever, a car looks really good. And then when you see it in person, the car looks maybe not as good as what you were expecting. This is the first time ever in my life where this car actually looked better in person than it did in the photos, which I could not believe. So the history behind this car is the previous owner, out of what I've been told, was a collector and he owned, I don't know how many cars, but he had a lot of cars. This was one of them and he babied this thing. I swear to God, he babied this thing. And the condition of this car, when I went to go see it, after I decided, after a month when it went up on uh, on Goonet, I decided, you know what? I want to go see this car. I'm going to go see it. And when we went to go see it, I was shocked at how much better this car was in person than I saw in the photos. It was literally in, like, showroom condition. I mean, it still is now, but I've had it for a couple of weeks now, so... Uh, you know, it's a little bit dirty already. The interior kind of has like dust and stuff inside of it. You know, the typical stuff. Um, so I went to go see it and everything, I swear to God, was like as if this car was brand new. The engine, every all the plastic, like no fade on the plastic perfectly. Uh, no imperfections, no scratches, no rust. Nothing on like the frame of the car anywhere on the car. Uh, previous owner, single owner was a collector. Um, he babied this thing like crazy. Um, he probably only drove it on weekends or something. And then the reason why he sold it to wherever he sold it to was because of the, the new GR86 that got released. So he wanted to buy one of those. So he ended up selling this, which I think he should have kept it. But if he didn't, or if he decided to keep it, then we would not have this right now. So, um, yeah, so the car was in excellent condition. The interior, even now, not as much as it did two weeks ago when I got the car, it still has really strongly, it still has the new car smell, which is unbelievable. This car's 40,000 kilometers, just over 40,000 kilometers on it. Uh, it's a 2015, so how many years is that? Seven or eight years or something? Something like that, right? It's unbelievable how good condition this car is in. Absolutely no rust anywhere. No imperfections. Uh, just like very tiny little minor things like on the, the seat bolsters and tiny little, tiny, tiny, tiny little scratches on the door handles, stuff like that. Other than that though, absolutely nothing when it comes to imperfections on this car. I know you guys, all of you probably know a Hachiroko. It's nothing special to you guys looking, but there's a couple of things that I think uh, you guys would be pretty amazed to see or things I want to show you guys because I'm not really sure why the car has it or what exactly it is. So give you guys a quick walk around maybe see if I can cover this as best as I can <laughs> that's not gonna work too well is it well that's fine that's fine there we go there's one thing on the back that I'll show you guys for sure pretty pretty sweet yeah all right so you guys be the judge of this is this clean or what for an eight-year-old car. I don't know if this car's been tuned or I highly doubt it. I think it's completely untouched. I think everything's completely normal. Everything's factory. Um, but you guys tell me, out of what you can tell here, does this look like a showroom quality car or what? Honestly, absolutely. Out of what I can tell, there's no rust or anything anywhere. No imperfections, absolutely nothing. Um, but this looks so clean for its age and everything like that. So you guys tell me. Um, tell me whether you think this is clean or not and tell me whether, if anything's been done to this. I, I highly doubt anything's been modified in here. I'm not really sure though. There's a couple things I don't know, um, but I know Hachirugas have, but I'm not sure um, what exactly it is because I'm just not very uh, knowledgeable, I guess you call it, which is uh, the first one is, I honestly have no idea what these are. Um, I know a lot of cars have strut mounts, I think they're called, or strut braces or whatever you want to call it. But they're usually mounted to uh, the top of the coils, right? But these ones are mounted here, so I'm not really sure. I know 
most 8.6s have these or all of them have them, but I'm not entirely sure what exactly they're for. So if somebody is a lot more knowledgeable on this car, please let me know. I have no idea what why these are mounted specifically here and what they're actually for. So, um, But other than that, I don't think anything's been touched in the engine aside from the previous owner or the dealership or whoever actually cleaning this thing because it is honestly, in my opinion, mint condition for it being eight years old, I believe. So yeah, you guys tell me, what do you, what do you think? Engine is uh, pretty clean. So yeah, no, no rust or anything that I can tell. No imperfections, no, no twisted frame, absolutely nothing. Yeah, so you guys let me know, what do you think? Also the headlights in these also look like they're brand new absolutely no oxidization no caziness absolutely nothing i'm not sure what exactly the previous owner did to this car to keep it so clean um but usually headlights in any car i would assume uh usually start yellowing or fading or whatever these headlights have absolutely nothing i mean they are dirty because i've been driving the car for two weeks so there's like dust or stuff on it but if i were to wipe off all the dust these headlights would look like they were they just came out of the factory like a week ago um, both headlights are definitely like that, super, super clean. And I believe everything on this car is completely OEM, uh, the original. So that previous owner, I don't think replaced anything aside from uh, all the minor things like maybe the, the belts or, uh, you know, doing oil change, all that common stuff, right? But I think everything on this car is completely the original, which is unbelievable if you ask me. So it's super clean, super nice. And there's one thing I do want to show you guys because I don't know this actually. And it's on the back here. So you guys tell me this situation. I've never seen a Hachiroku um, that has these, uh, what do you call it? Muffler guards or whatever you want to call it. These plastic, these white pieces here. Um, in photos and on video, I guess it kind of looks weird. But in person, this actually looks so sick. But Someone tell me if these are actually a factory option or if these are aftermarket, because I'm not sure. I've never in my life seen a Hachiroko with these. So my car, I think, is the only one possibly in the whole country that has these. So someone let me know if you've ever seen another Hachiroko like this and tell me, uh, is this a factory option? Is this aftermarket? And what do you guys think? I don't know, but in my opinion, it looks pretty cool and it, I guess it's supposed to protect all the the fumes or whatever coming out of the exhaust and prevent it from getting on the bumper so i don't know that's there but i've never seen a hachinoko like this so the lights are also very very clean nothing no imperfections no scratches no no haziness no oxidization hopefully i can keep these like this for as long as i can as long as i can clean the car uh as often as possible you know wash it and everything and do all the minor stuff you need to do to it um also, one thing that I noticed, this, I actually didn't know this, but as you can tell here, uh, this car is limo tint. The third brake light is visible through here, so there's a cutout here. Um, my car did pass Shaka inspection, so the inspection you have to do to a car once every two years, it passed when I bought the car with limo tint, which I believe is, what, 10% or less or something like that? Not really sure. Um, someone correct me if I'm wrong. In North America... The standard is 35%, right? And I don't think it's legal to go lower than that. So Limilton, I think you get pulled over, right? Even if it's the, the rear windows and stuff, I think if you have uh, like 10% window tint, you get pulled over in North America. But here in Japan, apparently it's legal. And ever since this car passed its shuck inspection two weeks ago, I've been paying more attention to other cars on the road and seeing how many other cars also have limo tint and there's quite a few actually that I, I never realized um but yeah that's one thing that kind of surprised me actually i did not know that uh 10 or whatever this might be i believe it's around 10 percent, maybe even less than that is actually street legal here so yeah someone tell me is that true in north america as well because i think in north america you get pulled over if you have window tint this dark i'm not 100 percent sure though but out of what i may or may not know i believe in North America, it's illegal to have tint like this. But yeah, this is pretty sweet. So I'm gonna show you guys the interior because it is super, super, super clean. And uh, I've done a couple things already. 
which uh, you guys may or may not laugh at me for. So we got the Momo floor mats, which are already super dirty, um, covered in mud and stuff like that. And then I did change out this shift knob. I know, I know a lot of you are going to say, why would you swap out this stock shift knob? Why would you do that so quickly? Why would you get a bubble shifter? These are so ricer. Uh, laugh all you want. Criticize me all you want. I don't really care. I think it looks so sick in here. Believe it or not, I was actually going to get the 200 millimeter or 300 or whatever it was. But uh, yeah, I probably would have touched the, the ceiling or whatever of the car. <laughs> so I'm so glad I stuck with the 150. Uh, looks so good in here. Judge me all you want, but that's how it is right now. Aside from that though, yeah, nothing's been done. Carbon fiber on this piece here. I don't know what to call it. Uh, super tiny navigation system. But I think all of this is pretty standard in every Tachiroku FRS BRZ or whatever. So I don't think I need to explain to you guys all that. Um, aside from that, yeah, nothing uh, Nothing else. I have noticed the car has heated seats actually. So you know how people put like emblems or like those blocks or whatever in here? Like cutouts or whatever. Yeah, I can't really do that in here because it actually has heated seats. So <laughs> that's not happening. Also, ah, you got to have a Hachiroku inside of a Hachiroku, right? Unfortunately, this is the wrong year. This is a 2016 Tomika. Um, and clearly we have the 2015, so close enough. I don't think there ever was a 2015 Tomika ever made. So that's as close as we can get, but still pretty, pretty sweet. Also... One thing I didn't know that Hachirokus could do is the, the windows. I don't know if all of them do this, but when you close the door, right, the window closes like that. I thought that was so cool. I did not know they could do that, though. So the more you know, right? So, yes, it is an automatic. I know, I know. Laugh all you want. But like I told you guys in all of my previous videos, I'm not very good at owning a manual or driving a manual, I should say. <laughs> owning a manual as well. Um... If you didn't know, I used to own a Honda S660, a K sports car. Uh, yeah, there's quite a story behind that thing, so I'm, I'm not going to explain it to you guys right now. But long story short, I opted for the automatic just because it'd be way easier for me to maintain this car and everything. So, yeah, but there it is. Super, super clean. I swear, like, this is already considered dirty, even though it's so clean. This car was literally in showroom condition two weeks ago when I got in now it's just like it's dusty and there's dirt and stuff like that so but um yeah it still has the new car smell which is unbelievable for its age and the amount of kilometers that's 40,000 kilometers on the odometer um so yeah there it is that's pretty uh pretty awesome actually I think I, I think we scored well with this and another reason to why we were gone for so long is because there was actually one problem that after about three or four days after I bought the car, um, my mom actually noticed because um, she sat in the back seat. So I had my parents in the car. My dad was sitting in the passenger seat and my mom was sitting in the back seat. And they wanted to come for a ride because they wanted to experience what it's like to sit in a Hachiroku and all that kind of stuff. So um, as we were about to go while we were leaving the parking lot, so the parking lot that this car sits in, um, my mom was reaching for the seat belts. And funny enough, they didn't have any seatbelts. These were not here. The uh, the buckles or whatever, these were here. But the belts, both of the belts were missing. And my mom noticed that. So we called the dealership and we're like, uh, the car has no rear seatbelts. How did the car pass inspection with no seatbelts? So one of the, the salesmen actually drove all the way to my location over an hour away at like 8 p.m. And this was, how long ago was this? This was about a week and a half ago, a week ago. Um, he came, he looked at the car and he said, yeah, there really is no seatbelts and he apologized and everything. Then he had to take the car back to the dealership to get it checked by the technicians. And apparently there's a feature that I did not know about that the Hachiroku has. And that is, you can actually hide these seatbelts in here, in this corner piece right here. So the seatbelts were actually hidden inside of here and they had to, they had to like pull these seats down and then pull off this plastic. And then they found the seatbelts in here is what they told me. So apparently it's like a feature that the Hachiroku has. And I guess the previous owner must have done that to keep the car cleaner or just personal preference. And I guess uh, he never really carried anyone in the back seats anyways, because 
yeah, as you guys know, there's absolutely no leg space in the rear of a Hachinoku, so that's probably what he did. Um, but yeah, they told me, or before they actually figured out that their seatbelts were in here, they told me that if they had to order the parts, it would have uh, taken until the 20th of September. I would have had to wait like another two or three weeks and the car would have had to sit at the dealership. So luckily they found the seatbelts. They fixed them immediately. So the guy drove back to the dealership. Um, immediately within two minutes, they found the seatbelts and then they fixed it. And they had to wait two more days to get the car back. And uh, about a week after that, which is now, here we are. The car is <clears throat> perfect. Everything's good. And uh, this is what we got now. I had swapped out the valve stem caps for purple ones. And as you guys saw, the, the shift knob was also purple. So that means I kind of want to go for like a whitish purple theme. But I'm still looking for stuff that I could either put in the car, like parts or whatever like that, um, to kind of go for that theme. But for now, I think the car will stay pretty much as it is. Just because obviously I just bought the car. I don't really want to get into modifying it so quickly and stuff like that. And also, I kind of want to make back the money that I spent on buying this thing. So, uh, yeah, modifications and stuff. Speaking about that. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do, actually. I, I really don't know. Because this car is so clean. Um, and kind of like all the old Japanese sports cars are getting harder to find and... Harder to buy because of the prices and everything skyrocketing. I don't know if I actually want to touch anything on this car. Um, the engine I'm most likely going to keep as it is for pretty much its entire life. I highly doubt I'm going to turbo it or supercharge it or anything like that. I wouldn't know how to do that anyways. And to be honest, I don't uh, I don't want to pay for more for gas and destroy the engine by overpowering it and stuff like that. So I think um, engine-wise, I'm probably just going to leave it as is for its entire life um but when it comes to you know like body parts or body kits or you know like aftermarket steering wheels and stuff like that i may or may not do that sometime down the line um but the one thing i do want to do possibly is i've always been interested in finding a nerd spec for this car but because it has which i believe is a factory option i'm not sure what this wing is called I know the TRD one's like the duck bill spoiler or whatever. I'm not sure what this one's called, um, but it has this on it. And out of what I know, I believe it's actually bolted down, uh, not uh, taped down by 3M tape or whatever it is. So if I were to find a nerve spec for this, I think I would have to replace the trunk as well. So uh, probably find a nerve spec trunk combination and then just remove this one and then fit the other one on, probably do something like that and can switch back and forth and stuff like that. I don't really want to mess um, with everything that this car has right now, just because I want to keep it clean. And I, I, I don't know for sure, nobody knows for sure, and I'm, I'm probably wrong when I tell you guys this, but I feel like sometime down the line, this car could become a little more valuable. Possibly, maybe not, but if I keep it clean, which I really do want to do, then you know, there's a chance that the value of this might go up even just a little bit, if anything. There you have it. There's my 2015 Toyota Hachiroku. Super JDM. Super nice. One of my dream car that I've always wanted and that I was actually able to afford because all the 90s JDM sports cars are completely impossible to get anymore. So this was it. And we finally got it after all these years. I finally got something I've always wanted in my life and I hope to share this experience with you guys in future videos coming up. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna do like in the near future when it comes to all the stuff I wanna do with this car on this channel, but for now, here's what we got. Hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you think about this. Do you think uh, it was worth it for me to buy this? Do you guys think I should have got something else? Do you guys think I should have bought a different color or done something completely different? Uh, and tell me, what are some things you would like to see me do with this thing? Put a massive body kit on it or something, or really actually think about getting the nerf spec, or leave it as is? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. That'll be all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope to share more of this experience with you guys in future videos coming up. But for now, I'm going to drive this thing, because 
I love this thing so much and hopefully you guys too. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Johnny.